Okay, so you finally went out and bought yourself a truck mount. You know, congratulations. However, I know a lot of people go out and buy a new one from a distributorship, or they're starting up a new business, go out and buy a used one, and they have little or no experience with a truck mount. But I want to tell you what, it's a huge investment. And if you don't know how to use your truck mount and you don't know how to maintain it properly, it can either make your business or break your business. So stick with me. I'm going to walk you through all the different components of how to use and maintain a truck mount. You know, when it comes to truck mounts, there's basically three different components. You have your engine, you have a blower, and you have a pump. But I want you to understand there's two different types of variations of truck mounts out there. You have slide-ins, which you're seeing right here, which has its own engine. And then you have direct drives, which run off the engine of the van. I personally prefer a slide-in. Why is that? Well, if you're getting into an accident, you can slide the machine out and put it into another van. Your van starts to wear out, you want to get a new van, you slide it into a new van. Also, you're putting a, a ton of wear and tear on your van when the engine's running all the time. But there's pros and cons to each, but for my company, we definitely prefer a slide-in. Now, I want you to understand also, there's a lot of moving components when it comes to a truck mount. You have belts, blowers, heat, and different things that are going on. That being the case, always exercise safety around it. Read your instruction manual. If you can't find one, look online and find one if you bought a used machine. Also remember, there's a thread on truck mount forms on the Facebook and on truckmountforms.com that talks about truck mount injuries. So it does happen. You might want to take a look at that so you'll avoid them. Okay, let's do a quick rundown of the basic features of most truck mounts, especially the Starfire right here. You have your key switch over here. You have an override switch which you press in. That way it overrides your oil pressure so you can get the engine started. You have a tack over here, also a temperature gauge and your hour meter. You have a vacuum gauge. You have a thermostat where you can adjust up and down whether you're cleaning furniture, carpets, tiles. So that's real nice. You can adjust your temperature. You have a water pressure gauge over here so you can adjust your pressure up and down according to whatever you're working with. Again, whether it's carpets, whether it's tile, whether it's upholstery, it's very helpful to have that. Over here you have your intake for your fresh water tank. You can go live if you want to. We have a live hookup. You hook it up right there. Or you can just run a garden hose right to the front of this and go ahead and fill your tank up. You have a view tube over here which you can view how full it is. You also have an outlet over here where you can let the water come out on top of it. Moving over here, you have a courtesy hose. Remember, the water is very hot coming out of here. You want to make sure you're careful when you're using it. If you're going to be filling up something, really it's better probably to use hot tap water when you're mixing up your products and uh, you might want to just use this to cool the machine off. Either way, just be careful because it is hot, because remember, that hose is very close to the machine, so you're going to get your hottest temperatures. Over here, you have a dump valve over here where you can let all the dirty water out of your tank. Always dump wastewater according to your local, your state, and your federal laws. That's very important. Then you have your solution high pressure outlet over here, and then you can go live with this, or you can bring your solution line around, hook it up, we go live, just pop it right in there. That way we can go right to work because we use live reels. That's optional, keep that in mind. Over here we have our inline filter. And basically we have a two and a half inch and we have a two inch. You can use either one of them, pull it in and out, change your filter and keep an eye on it. Over here you can adjust your pressure up and down by turning this knob, you can look at your pressure. Over here you have your chemical feed. You can adjust your chemical feed for your last step, in, step injection. So if you're using rinses or using detergents or combinations of both, you have the capability to go ahead and use that. You can also prime it here. You can turn it on and off, so that's a real nice feature. Last but not least, you want to take and use some type of water displacement fluid and go ahead and put it right in here, open this up. That way you can maintain your blower for a long time. Okay, before starting your engine, it's a good idea to check your belt, your filters, if there's any oil, any oil around it. Make sure it's not loose and also wipe up anything and keep it nice and clean. Make sure there's no debris around the truck. All right, at the beginning of every day, of course, make sure you also check your engine oil level. Okay, what I teach my employees is that if you fill it up too full, you can harm the engine. And if it's too low, it can harm the engine. The best place to keep it for me is right between the hash marks. To me, I think it's very important to go ahead and prep your truck for the next day's workload. How do you do that? Well, starting off, what I'll basically do is I teach my employees and myself on the way back to the shop, we'll go ahead and gas the truck up. Then we get back to the truck, we'll wipe the machine down. What does that do? Well, by making it look good, you deliver that positive moment of truth the next day. We also make sure that the filters are clean. We go ahead and make sure your fresh water tank is full. Why is that? Well, maybe you're going to a house that might not have water the next day or a little bit of water. On top of it, you want to go ahead and dump your waste tank. Maybe you can't dump at the place you're going to. What does this all do for you? If you go ahead and prep the truck, make sure all your chemicals are full, you've got everything inside the truck and you're ready to go, it starts the day off on the right foot. And also make sure you're on time to your first client. 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at using the truck mount, the Starfire, in the field. Always make sure you're careful. It's really good to have a backup camera. We have them on our trucks. And you want to park at least 20 feet from the front door to keep carbon monoxide away from there. Um, I like to open my side doors and my back doors. Why do I do this? Because it delivers a PMOT, a positive moment of truth. The clients can see how clean the truck is. They can see I'm a professional and I'm using professional equipment. I like to take my shoe covers, put some pair of gloves inside of my pocket, and I'll head on up here. This is an unusual house because I had an employee clean the whole house except for the living room and dining room. I asked them to leave it for me, but pre-vacuum the dining room, I'm sorry, the living room, but go ahead and leave the dining room totally untouched. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it and give you a full demonstration. I still like to ring the bell and knock the door to, to see if anybody's home, or maybe a real estate agent maybe stopped by or something. So I'll go ahead and pop the code, take a look inside, see what I'm dealing with. This is my first time seeing the home. I notice here that the dining room is fairly soiled. It's got a lot of spots and stains. Traffic pattern's a little dirty. It's even dirtier than what you can see, even in the video. I also noticed some wrinkles in the carpet. I'm gonna to suggest to the property management company for us to stretch this room. Over here, I can see he has pre-vacuum. The room looks pretty good. So I'm gonna take my shoe covers off. I take them on and off each time I come inside the home. That way I don't track back and forth from outside. I'm gonna head back on out to the truck and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I always use the sidewalk. Don't walk through people's yards no matter where you have to park, even if you're in the street. It's just a common courtesy to walk down a sidewalk and a driveway. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my water. Now, I've filled up my water tank before I left, but I still wanna make sure I don't run out of water. Even though our pumps are made that they can run dry, I still don't like running a pump dry. Notice here, I like to go ahead and hook up my water. When I do, I go ahead and cut the water on just for a split second. Why do I do that? I wanna clear it of any bugs and spiders. We just had a carpet cleaner recently on YouTube the guy was bit by a, a brown recluse spider. Okay, now when the machine is still idling, I'm gonna go ahead and prime the chemical feed injection system. Make sure the ball moves all the way up. I'll put it in run position. I'm gonna check my water pressure. It's 500 PSI, that's perfect for cleaning carpet. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get my safety door. Why do I get my safety door? Because you never know uh, who might stop by, maybe a real estate agent, property management, or a prospective tenant. So I want to go ahead and set that example and that positive moment of truth by putting the safety door in position. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and fill my chemical jug here on the side. I want to make sure that it's completely full. I'm going to go ahead and add some Formula 99. Probably put eight ounces in there for the two and a half gallons. Probably fill it up to about the two gallon point. Now, since the machine is only in the idle position, I can go ahead and use my courtesy hose and I can go ahead and fill the tank to the two and a half gallon position. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my pre-spray. Since I've looked at the carpets, I've determined what I wanna use. I wanna use a combination of black label, a little bit of revive, and a little bit of unchained for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm gonna add the unchained because it has just a little bit of a dog smell even though he didn't find any urine stains and the customer didn't want any urine treatment. But he still has a little bit of a dog odor in there. So to knock that dog odor down, I'm gonna put eight ounces, of Unchained in there, and then I'm going to go ahead and add eight ounces of Revive. Now, I know Revive is generally made for furniture, but remember, it's basically a citrus solvent with some surfactants in it, so that's pretty cool, and it also has a very nice scent. So this little recipe right here does a great job. I like to take each individual home and determine what I'm going to mix up. Most of the times, Black Label will do it all by itself. Okay, so I'm going to put eight ounces of each of the liquids in there. Now I'm going to put my powder in there. Notice I have an oversized funnel, which is kind of cool because there's so much concentrate inside a black label. A lot of people don't realize it. We really don't have any additives and a bunch of fillers. So this way it's a very thick concentrate. Sometimes you might have to knock the jug on the side of the bumper just a little bit to break it up. Or just shake it up. I'm going to put eight ounces of this in there also. Now, since the machine is still in the idle position, I haven't revved it up high, so I don't have to worry about the... The water being too hot, like I said earlier, it's a good idea to mix it by tap, but maybe you might want to mix it before you even leave the shop. But I'm just showing you if I am on location, I'm going to mix it up, I'll go ahead and use my courtesy hose. And I'll fill it up there. I'm probably going to get about you know four or five gallons out of this. See my video on inline sprayers if you want to know more about inline sprayers. It's a lot of good information in it, and it helps you out a lot because you can run them four to one or eight to one. 
Okay, now as I walk right. back inside the home, I'm going to go ahead and shake the container so it's all mixed up real well. But before I even walk inside now, I'm going to go ahead and lay down my floor protector. And I'll go ahead and get my shoe covers. Notice how I like to take my equipment. Whatever I'm going to bring in, I'm going to go ahead and put it right on top of the floor protector. Get my corner guards into position. That way I don't scratch any walls, remove any paint. And plus it's a nice, another positive moment of truth. Remember, you want to deliver as many PMOTs as possible. Okay, now I'm going to do the figure eight motion. The same as I've showed on YouTube for doing the vacuum lines. You take your solution lines, pull it about arm's length, and when you do, I'm about six feet tall. I'm going to bring it about 40, 50 feet inside the home. And I'm going to pull down some extra because it's about 30 feet to the door. So I'll drop that. You want to make sure that your solution line stays on your sidewalks or your driveways. Why is that? Because high heat can burn a line in the grass. And that is a very negative moment of truth. Okay, so I'm going to walk inside again. I'm going to go ahead and set my hose down. Notice how long this floor protector is. I'm starting to bring that on there. And I like to hook my hoses up when I bring them in. Just go ahead and get it all hooked up. That way I'm ready to go when I come back in. No child's grabbing a hold of it. Hopefully you've let the customer know to remove pets and kids before you're cleaning. But you just never know. They're called accidents for a reason because they're not on purposes. I'm going to definitely adjust the solution line, make sure it's not a trip hazard and it's not in the grass. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get my vacuum line. And if you've seen my video on YouTube, I like to pull out a 50 foot section in a figure eight motion by pulling downward and I'll pull it and put it over the top of my shoulder. When I get to that 50 foot section, I'm going to pull out another 50 foot so I know it can get me right up to the door and again, I don't have to cross the grass. It just never looks good putting your equipment or your hoses or lines inside of the grass. I'll throw it up on my shoulder and work my way inside the home. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I can go ahead and lay this down right on my floor protection. Now, if I was working normally in this home and I just got started, a lot of this line is going to be going upstairs, so it wouldn't be piled right in here. But just for demonstration purposes, I want you to see it. I also want to maximize my efficiency. So every time I come in, I try to bring one or two items if I can bring them in carefully. Here I've got my CRB and I've got my wand at the same time. I always like to hook up all my vacuum lines and my solution lines, like I mentioned, because when these machines have such high lift, such high vacuum, the last thing you want to do when you throttle your machine up is have all that vacuum in a child or a pet get a hold of it. It's very dangerous. So make sure you have everything hooked up. Now I'll go ahead and unhook my vacuum line, and I'm going to go ahead and hook it to the truck mount. I also like to fill my vacuum first to make sure that it's sufficient, the filter's not clogged up, or nothing and everything's working smoothly. Very important. I want maximum efficiency, maximum performance. I'll go ahead now and take my vacuum on in. And like I said, the whole house has been cleaned except for the living room and dining room. And the living room has pre been pre-vacuumed, but I want to go ahead and pre-vacuum the dining room because I want to show you a couple of tips and tricks. So now that I'm going to walk throughout the house, it's time to put my shoe covers back on. Now you probably wonder, why are you putting your shoe covers on, Rob? Well, because you never know, like I said earlier, a property management company, a neighbor, anybody can show up and you want to show that you're a true professional. So you always want to be playing the part of the professional because that's what you are. All right, now notice, uh, I'm going to speed this up in a second, but before I do, notice I'm going north and south when I'm vacuuming. You want to get out as much dry particulate matter as possible. Why is that? Because if you don't, you're going to start pre-spraying, just turning into mud and mud is so much harder to get out of the carpet. So you want to take your time, do a real good thorough vacuuming. It's really going to maximize, again, your performance and your efficiency. You're going to move right along. Now here's something I want to show you. Notice I'm now I'm going from east to west on top of north to south. Why is that? Because I'm right in a transition area. This is where people turn the corner. These are the dirtiest areas in the traffic patterns. So you really want to take your time and do that extra amount. Plus, it's a nice little touch. You can go along your edges and vacuum up the dust with your crevice tool. Makes a big difference. And when clients see these things, all these things are resonating with the client and making a huge difference and an impact upon her so she'll use you in the future. Now, as I start to pre-spray, you're going to notice I have a towel in my pocket. Why is that? Because it's very easy to overspray hard surfaces. Yes, I like to warn clients. And yes, this is an empty home, but you never know if somebody's going to show up. Last thing you want them to do is walk in and hit that and have a liability on your hands. Now notice I'm paying attention to the traffic patterns first. I'm putting a nice layer. I like to build my pre-spray 
by layers, not just sit there and saturate an area because then it just runs down the fiber, gets down to the back and you have wicking and reoccurring stains. That is a very negative moment of truth. And then I'm going to go ahead over the whole area and I'm just going to basically do it like I'm painting. I'm just painting a nice layer. I'm cutting it off at the ends of the stroke. I'm putting a little bit extra on spots. Notice that. And then I'm going to go ahead, just like I'm painting the carpet, I'm building it up in layers. And I'm not overlaying it. Just putting enough of it to get the job done correctly. And I'll keep on showing you this because I want to show you a little something when we get over to this register. You can do one or two things. You can pull the register or you can leave the register there and spray around it very carefully because around there is a little bit of black marking. That's from filtration lines. I'll do the Nike shuffle on it and that way that'll start to get to work even before I use my pre-agitation machine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish pre-spraying. Remember, I'm putting the major amount of pre-spray when I'm pre-spraying and the major amount of work is being done in the traffic patterns and just very lightly on the edges where nobody walks. Nobody walks along the baseboards, but pets do sometimes. So it's a good idea still to get a little bit there and whatever is left over, of course, the rents can take care of. All right, now it's time for the CRB. If you don't know what a CRB stands for, it stands for a counter rotating brush. It's got two brushes, each turning different directions. And what this does, it helps dig deep down inside the carpet without harming the carpet fibers and really gets those uh, those uh, pet hairs and different things of like that and just the deep grimy stuff that's in there. Plus it helps disperse your pre-spray evenly across the carpet. This gives you a better even clean, gives you a faster clean. And notice the hairballs are already starting to pop up and you're going to see that. I like to keep one of the catchers on the back there so I can go ahead, the renovator tray, and that will catch a lot of it. In the front I leave it off that way I can get up to the walls real close. So we'll speed this up again. You notice I'm going north to south and already the carpets are starting to look better. It's amazing the difference that it makes. Now notice when I get back over here to that transition, I'm going to slow it down and what am I doing? I'm going east to west. So that way I'm going over it basically four different directions. That makes a huge difference in the performance and the customer satisfaction level. Plus it's going to go a whole lot quicker when you're cleaning those traffic patterns. So I'm going to take my time do a nice even pre-agitation across the whole room. You will be amazed how many clients walk in and say, after I've just pre-agitated and pre-sprayed, and they say, wow, look, you did a fantastic job. And I said, well, Mr. Jones, I haven't even finished cleaning the carpet yet. If you're very gentle and careful, you can go over a register or you can take it out. It's up to you. Just make sure you take your towel and wipe off your registers when you're done. All right, so I'm here I'm going to go ahead, continue to pre-agitate. This is really doing a great job of breaking up all those soils, oils, dead skin, fungus, mildew, bacteria, all the different types of things that are in there. Now it's coming into contact with the pre-spray. And so a great pre-spray and great agitation equals great results, especially when you're running the machine like the, the Starfire. But just look at the carpet already. It's already starting to look brand new. That black label with a little bit of revive in it and unchained really makes the carpets pop. And it's amazing what it does. I'm going to tell you what your reviews, your referrals, and your repeats will go up dramatically by using the right cleaning agents. It's just a huge difference. Plus it breaks the bond on polyester carpets like no other products in the industry. On top of it, we're very conscious about how we make our products. We're very, we work hard to make sure that they're very safe using safer chemistry and also it delivers that high performance. Also we're able to do it with lower pH. So it's safer for you, your technicians, and most of all for your homeowners, their children, and their pets. All of this makes a huge difference. Look how nice it looks already. It almost looked brand new, didn't it? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hook up my solution line. And for a second here, I want to show you the vacuum. Listen to that. It's amazing the amount of lift this machine has and the heat. It really brings on the performance. Look at all that heat and vacuum. The carpets look great and they're almost dry. You can actually bend down with your knees after you clean the room and you can't even see the knees of your carpet, the knees being wet because the carpets are so dry. So having the right chemistry, having the right machine, all makes a huge difference as you're already starting to see. Now when I get to this edge here in this transition, I'm very careful even though I have the glide and I'm going to go ahead and wipe up the transition to make sure there's no leftover moisture there. Okay, it looks great.
Okay, it's now time to cool the machine down. However you're gonna notice, we gotta change the machines. I'm going to show you how to cool down the Profire, which is our dual wand truck mount, a true dual wand. So watch for videos coming in the near future, how to dual wand a home or a business. Now basically, you're gonna cool it down the same way. You're lowering the throttle, you're going to lower the thermostat. All you're basically doing is just reducing the heat inside the machine, your RPMs, and also your heat of the water. So basically cut the machine off and then you're good to go. Hey, I really wanna thank everyone for all your support. I'm a big believer in the law of reciprocity. So we do everything we can to help cleaners succeed. Uh, included in that, I wanted to mention to you, uh, throughout the video we had talked about uh, showing you the mix guide. And here it is right here. Basically it breaks down pre-sprays, rinses and detergents, boosters and uh, additives for pre-sprays, urine, pre-spray boosters, deodorizers, odor eliminators, specialty spotters, upholstery, wool, VLM, protectors, green products, tile, grout, and stone. On top of it, I got a section here for recipes. You notice in the video, I did a nice little recipe there for that home. And it varies for different homes and residential, commercial settings, and fiber types. Last but not least, I've got tips and tricks and recipes that I've accumulated over my 40 years. And I'm sharing that with you. It's available in tmfshop.net. Like I said, we're a father and son team. We built this from nothing. We really appreciate all your support and everything you can do for us is truly appreciated. And we'll continue to do everything we can for you. I'm Rob Allen with Truck Mount Forms. Have a great day. Okay, now in conclusion, you know how to basically use your truck mount, whether it's new or it's used, Keep a couple of things in mind like this. We're going to talk about safety and we're going to talk about the warranty. To keep your warranty in effect, make sure you read your warranty and follow all the manufacturer's guidelines. On top of it, when it comes to safety, you want to keep in mind or maybe a little list for you and your employees to make sure that you keep your truck far enough away that you're not exposed to carbon monoxide and you don't expose your homeowners to carbon monoxide. Remember, this is heavy duty equipment and you want to be careful around it. Also, like I mentioned earlier, your courtesy hose is very close to the truck mount. You might also watch out for those high temperatures. Plus, it's a good idea to replace your hoses every year or so or whatever to make sure that you don't worry about them breaking when you're out in the field and causing some high heat and hot water going everywhere and burning yourself. Plus, you're dealing with high pressure. When the winter comes around, your machine can be exposed to freezing temperatures. And basically, when it gets down into freezing temperatures, you'll go ahead and your heat exchangers and your other components can actually break and crack. And then that can cost you thousands of dollars, so be careful there. When it comes to dumping, like I mentioned earlier, make sure you follow your local, your state, and your federal laws. Okay, also lastly, and I think this is very important, you also want to remind your customers that floors will be slippery. So that's not all the safety features, but that's fairly comprehensive, so you can kind of keep it in mind when you're dealing with the public out there and you have your new truck mount and now you know how to use it. Okay, so now you know how to use and maintain your truck mount. Watch out for our next video. It's going to be talking about how to troubleshoot and how to service your truck mount. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll get an alert and we really appreciate it. Well, I'm Rob Allen with Truck Mount Forms. Have yourself a great day. You can grout master. Yeah, so let's say this pile and grout. Grout master. Okay, uh, are you getting, uh, so you're going to say add the free spray? Grout master. Oh, okay. Well, same thing. So, you're going to say it's like a free sample? Grout master. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, well, you've been very helpful. Goodbye. And grout master. Grout master, the industry's best tile and grout and carpet cleaning booster.